So what you're looking at here is a high resolution terrain made by Horro and it's being rendered through a spherical mapper also made by Horro and myself and the render type is a 360 degree panoramic projection but it's corrected so it's a true spherical map with the spherical mapper that's a, a lens system that fits around the perspective camera. Now the thing is I want to use this image as a backdrop in another scene. Uh, be because the train's very high resolution, let's say in the other scene I'm already running out of memory, and so this would be a decent backdrop. So, and it'll also speed up the rendering of this scene. So I'll just set this up so I can use it as a backdrop. I'll get rid of the ground plane, I'm not going to need that. And I'm going to turn the atmosphere off so it doesn't interfere. And really I don't need the bright sun for what I'm doing, I can set up my own light sources. I'll create a standard bright sphere and just enlarge that to encompass the entire scene and then go into the materials and set the ambient color to the image that I want to use. So I'll load in this image uh, like so. There's my image. Check out of there. Get rid of diffuse. Give it full ambient output. And then finally go into sky and fog and just make sure I've got maximum out for, from the global ambient color to drive this effect. Give this a quick render and say, oh, that looks a bit strange. And that is because when you load in this image, even though you've loaded it on a sphere, it seems to decide that uh, it wants to be sinusoidally mapped, which is a very strange choice. So we can choose, because we're on a sphere, either parametric, and that will work nicely, or spherical will work just as well. The only difference between the two is a 90 degree shift. So I'll do spherical mapping, and now what I hope you can see is that this image is not really high enough resolution for the render resolution, my final render resolution here, and also for the field of view of the camera that I have, which is quite large. If I enlarge it, my field of view, you'll get some strange distortion, but you can see it doesn't look so soft now. But if I narrow the field of view down, depending on what I've got in the scene, I might want a field of view like as narrow as that, then this isn't going to be high enough resolution to be a backdrop. I could render a bit of this and just put in a 2D face with it as a backdrop but that wouldn't help me if I had something in my scene let's put something in my scene now for the sake of argument we'll we'll introduce a sphere I know it's not going to make much sense but just bear with me and I'm going to modify the material on this so that it's just a reflective sphere now if you have reflective objects in your scene they're going to show bits of the backdrop that aren't directly visible inside your render so you may need a high resolution backdrop which is really what we're getting to with this so I'll go in here and say hmm I'm gonna need that oh at least 5,000 pixels across so this is a 2 to 1 aspect ratio because it's a spherical map and that means that's 2,500 pixels high okay no problem let's uh, go into our document setup and set this up to 5,000 pixels across ah oh dear it doesn't let me do that. It puts a horizontal limit of 4,000 pixels. Hmm. Well, let's say, right, I can, I can think of a way of getting around this. I'll put the document aspect ratio of 1 to 2 and then increase the vertical value to 5,000 and then go to my perspective camera and the attributes and turn the camera on its side. Uh, right, so there we go. And uh, ah, looking at the preview here, things are looking a bit strange. Okay, so I'll have to investigate this. Let's take it back down so we can see what we're doing. And try and find out why this hasn't worked. So I flipped on its side. That's going to allow me to render it the correct size, but I've got these weird distortions. And the issue here is that it's not always possible to turn your camera on its side and just render the scene. And the reason for that is that we're using a panoramic projection and that will always make the horizontal bit the panorama so even turning the camera on its side is not going to help us you're not going to end up with a panoramic um, view on its side because of the way that this projection mode works so it, it's not an option we need to find some other way of rendering this at a higher resolution so I'll just go back to my camera and rotate it back into position for horizontal rendering and then I'm going to have to that's the spherical mapper causing that repeat there because for spherical maps it needs to be 2 to 1 aspect ratio 
So we'll just go back to where we were to start with and then ponder how we can get this out at the resolution that I'm looking for for the backdrop. There is a solution and for Bryce 7 it's been improved. Um, it's not an ideal solution but it, it's, uh, it's closer than it was. We've got render to disk now in Bryce 7. 7.1 it'll use multi-core processor support so it won't take as long so you click on render to disk and at this point you can enter larger horizontal resolutions there is a limit it's enormous you probably never need to use it um, you don't need to pay any attention to this uh, legacy details here for printing because obviously you'd use a paint package to make the adjustments for that so we're only really interested in our output size because it knows the aspect ratio is 2 to 1, if you enter a value in here, it'll automatically fill it in for you there. It'll also give you an estimated size on disk. So we'll just hit the check mark when we've got the size we want. You'll be asked for a file name, so I'll give it a different file name, um, just so that I don't confuse it with my file that's saved with Bryce. We've got options to save it in different formats, which is cool. You can even save it as a HDR format, so you can uh, get the high resolution information for the colors, but we're just going to stick with a standard bitmap. So we'll save that at 24 bits per pixel. You get this progress bar. It's going to uh, render from the top down just a line at a time, which means that when it does the sky, it'll go pleasingly swiftly. And then when it hits the information on this terrain, which is a high resolution with a rather complex curvature controlled material on it, it's going to grind to a halt. So Essentially, I'm going to just pause the video at this point and then we'll come back to it later when it's closer to completion and then say and save it, save it out. Well, it'll just say it's ready and I think it just closes that window, but we'll see. I can't remember. It's a long time since I've done any rendering to disk because they don't tend to need such high resolution images, but you may find yourself in a position where you do need to, to do that. So it's worth knowing. Then we'll go and check it out here in our uh, test scene. So there you go. I'll pause the video now and we'll come back to it in a while. OK, well, this is interesting. I can see from my process monitor that Bryce is no longer using the CPU, but the progress bar seems to indicate that it's only got through 57%. But in actual fact, it has finished and it has saved the file. So here we go. Here's our high resolution image that's finally rendered out, even though it doesn't look like it has. So if I just click on the screen here, you can see that the file and all these things are active. So I can just close this little progress bar. So that was a little bit deceptive. It didn't look like it had finished and then it had. So just be aware of that. So let's go to our test scene then and load this image in and see if it's of a suitable resolution. And then that'll be the end of the video. So let's just load this in find it wherever it's saved. I think I called it 1, 2, didn't I? There we go, 1, 2. That's loaded in. Check out of here. Check out of here. And we'll see an, an instant improvement in the resolution. And that, because uh, it's just a background image, will render very swiftly and be sufficiently high, high enough resolution for whatever I'm going to do next in this scene. So there you go. That's the end of the video. Hope you found that interesting, useful, and that uh, it helps explain how you might use render to disk.